How much land does a man need? Do you have an answer? Well, let's have a look at the short story. How much land does a man need? Written by Count Lev Nikolovich Tolstoy, popularly known as Leo Tolstoy. He's a Russian writer and a very prominent figure in the English literature. This particular piece of work was published in the year 1886. Leo Tolstoy brings out a realistic portrayal of life, showing us the corruptive power of greed. He also tells us as to how man's quest for materialistic pleasure can never be quenched. And that's how humans are. But what we need to pay is a big price. Let's have a closer look at the story. How much land does a man need? And we hope to find the answer to this question. When we start the story, we are introduced to the main character, Paho, who is the protagonist of the story. The rest of the characters that we see in the introductory part is Pahom's wife, and the elder sister. There's one more person in this introductory section that's none other than the devil. Now, the beginning of the story, we can see Pahom's house. It's in the village and Pahom is a peasant. Pahom and Pahom's life, wife, they're leading a very happy life. They live in the village. They are happy peasant family and they're content with what they have. Suddenly, they have a visitor. They're visited by none other than Pahom's wife's elder sister. So the elder sister is actually coming to Pahom's house to meet her, her younger sister and her family. So when the elder sister comes to Pahom's family, she's not very happy with the things that she sees in the village because she comes from the city. So she tells her sister, she rather boasts about the life in the city, about the way they dress, the way they eat, the way they mingle with people with elegant manners, the way they, uh, they go to the theatres. It's a different life altogether when compared to the village life. But the younger sister repeatedly tells her sister that they're always content with what they have and life in the village is quite happy. And we have no problem with absolutely no qualms about the life in the village. And she also did tell her sister, life out here in the village might seem anxious, but they earn for their necessity and therefore life is quite safe. They may never grow rich, but they shall always have enough to eat. Well, the elder sister was not happy at all and she repeatedly kept telling her sister that you don't know anything at all about life, about life in the city. Well, if you're going to lead a way like this, you will always be in this dung heap. 
the younger sister was not happy at all with the way her sister spoke to her and therefore she retorted. She said, well, the peasant folks might live a very hard life, but we never bow our heads to anyone. Our fortunes might be favorable and at times might be unfavorable too. But yet we live a happy life because we need not bow down to anyone else. But this is not the condition with you or the life in the city. If you think that life is always favorable to you, there will be a time when life would be unfavorable and you will not be able to accommodate that period of time. And she also says that the devil is right there watching over you and he will tempt your family with cards or he will tend your husbands with women and therefore your life will always be drastic. Well, this is the casual conversation that the sisters have with each other. Well, Pahom was actually listening to this whole conversation and he kept thinking to himself, well, actually, the elder sister is right. Life in the city is always happy and exciting. There is no toiling of the land. There is no anxiety. There is no hard labor. But life out there is so cozy. And he did think that the elder sister was quite right. And he also said to himself, if I had enough land, I wouldn't even fear the devil himself. This is what he says. I wouldn't even fear the devil himself if I had enough land. Well, surprisingly, the devil was listening to it all. He was sitting right behind the oven and he was listening to it all. He overhears the conversation, the conversation of these two, of the two ladies and also what Pahom tells himself. And the devil decides, well, it's time to tempt Pahom, give him more land and tempt Pahom. This is the first bit of the story where we are introduced to the characters some of the characters or rather the main characters out here and this section the first section is the exposition stage so the devil overhears and he is waiting to tempt Paho giving him more land we go to the next section we see that Pahom is working in the land and there is an owner, a landowner, another character. The landowner is a lady. Now she has a very good relationship with the people out there and always in good terms with the neighborhood until she appoints a steward or an assistant. So here we have the next character, the steward or the assistant who takes care of the land that she has. She has about 300 acres of land. Well, the steward is a very cunning fellow. He kept unnecessarily fining the peasants when the cattle trespassed the lands and these farmers were finding it difficult or these peasants were finding it difficult to cooperate with this new steward. And now there was a time when these peasants came to know that this lady is planning to sell her land to the innkeeper who is staying right next door or on the high road. This is another character, a very minor character. We don't have any other mention of this uh, innkeeper. 
So the next character is the innkeeper. So remember, this lady is planning to sell the land to the innkeeper and the peasants get to know it. Well, they're quite worried because it is only now that they realized that this innkeeper is worse than the steward out there. So the peasants get together and they decide to go and speak to the lady and buy the land from her and not giving it to the innkeeper. So the peasants uh, went on behalf of their commune, on their community and they tell her not to sell the land to the innkeeper but they would offer her a better price and they would buy it. And the peasants actually decides to buy the land from her jointly. But remember, we already talked about the devil. The devil had already planned and he puts up a trap there. Now, what does he say? He sows evil seeds into each of these people and especially to the home. And with the evil seeds coming within them, the peasants out there decides to buy the land on their own and not as a joint effort. So when they buy it individually, they can, or they, or each of them can buy it according to their own means. So if I have a bigger amount than the other person, I get more land. So this was the devil's trap. And yes, finally, each of these peasants decides to buy the land according to their own means. So Pahom overhears that his neighbor was buying 50 acres. Okay, Pahom hears that his neighbor was buying the land for 50 acres and he pays only half the price and the rest half is due. Well, obviously the devil has started working. Pahom was envious and he speaks to his wife and decides to buy 20 acres of land. Pahom decides to buy 20 acres of land. Pahom collects a lot of his, keeps all his assets together and finds that he has almost 100 rubles. 100 rubles for which he also sells his colt, he sells half of their bees, he hires his, his own son as a laborer and um, borrowed some of the amount from his brother-in-law and he signs the agreement with the lady, paid half of the amount and the rest in two years time. Pahom is all excited. He signs the agreement after which he borrows seeds and he has a fine harvest. He pays off all his debts to the lady, to the brother-in-law within one year. Remember, he was to pay off in two years, but in one year he has a good harvest and he is able to pay off the money to the lady and to his brother-in-law whom he had borrowed from and thus he became the land owner. Everything went fine, absolutely smooth until the neighboring peasants trespassed on his cornfields and meadows. Initially he was quite okay with it because it was quite natural that they would just walk through his land. So he politely goes and tells them, please do not trespass my land. But finally, he knew that his polite way of approaching these neighbors were quite futile. 
So he goes and approaches the district court. He sees a judge. Well, he did not want to really harm them. He only wanted to teach these people a lesson. And they were all duly fined. Whoever trespassed his meadows, they were all duly fined. But remember, what could have happened? Well, yes, all the other neighbors, the peasants who live next door, they all had a grudge against Pahom. They all had a grudge against Pahom. And sometimes you could also see that these pe peasants, these villagers, they slowly began, began looting Pahom's land. They even cut five young lime trees, small ones. They cut it off. And Pahom did have a feeling that it could be none other than Simon. Again, this is also a minor uh, character. There is no mention of this character um, in the rest of the story. Well, Pahom becomes furious. All these while, he was quite slow. He was quite polite. He only wanted to teach them a lesson. But now, he was furious. And he quarreled with the judges too because he reported this to the judge. And he had to quarrel with the judge because the judge could not find any solid evidence against Simon and he let Simon go free. And that is the reason as to why Pahom was furious. He just could not take this at all and he had to find, fight or quarrel with the judge. So slowly we see that things are moving quite slow. He is a landowner now. And, and after a few years, some of the peasants or some of his friends, they slowly started relocating to many other places. So one day, as he was busy in his own land, he was actually visited by a traveler, a traveling peasant in fact. And he came from the land of Volga. Okay, so we have yet another character out here who is a traveler, who is also a peasant, comes from the land of Volga. Please remember these names. This traveler, who is a peasant, he informed Pahom that they had a very fertile land, a commune land. They had all brought it together and it's a fertile soil and it produced more yield. Many of them who came empty handed, now they have six horses and two cows of their own. Even those who come empty handed, they have six horses and two cows of their own. Well, Pahom was quite surprised. You don't have anything, you go empty handed and you make money. Remember, the devil is working within him. So, we see that there is a desire in Pahom's heart. And therefore, this instilled desire finally leads him to sell his land that he had bought before which he would also go to Volga to inquire about the land because there is no point going there and finally uh, you know come back with nothing at all so he goes there he inquires about the land well Pahom was so impressed because this was exactly as what the traveler peasant had told him described by the stranger Every man had 25 acres of land. Remember, he has only 20 acres. Every man out there have 25 acres of land. So yes, he sells off everything. He sells off his belongings, his land, his home. 
and he also withdrew from the membership that he had within that community. He goes to Volga, he applies for a membership there and he buys five shares of communal land. Five shares of communal land for himself and for his sons. And in total, he has 125 acres of land. What a jump from 20 acres to 125 acres of land. He bought all that he needed and he had plenty of fertile, cultivable land. He was extremely happy. He just could not express his happiness. He was so happy that he moved from this place and he's finally reached Volga and he was happy that he could meet that stranger peasant. He wanted to sow more wheat and he also took a land for lease for a period of one year. Uh, well, Pahom noticed that uh, the peasants were living on freehold land and those peasants who were living on freehold land were growing wealthy day by day. So he thought of buying the freehold land. So remember, he already has 125 acres of land. So after, after three years of his toiling in this 125 acres of land along with his sons, making a good for, uh, uh, cultivation out there, after three years, he finally decides to buy the freehold land because he was also leasing out land. So he decides to buy the freehold land rather than leasing out the land. So he made an agreement with the peasant for 1500 rubles in order to buy the freehold land. So he makes an agreement for 1500 rubles in order to buy the freehold land. Well, after making this agreement, after some days, he is visited again by a passing dealer, yet another character. So after the traveler peasant, we have a passing dealer. Okay. And he was just returning from the Bashkis, again another city in Russia. So we have the first one here, Volga, and the next one is the Bashkis. And he said he bought 13,000 acres of land for just 1,000 rubles. Remember, 15 rubles and he is going to buy some land. But here there is a man who is paying only 1,000 rubles and he is, he is getting 13,000 acres of land. Wow! He could never dream of such a huge amount of land. And this dealer also said that all that they need to do is make friends with the chief of the Bashkas. That's all that you need. And the dealer also said that he had gotten land from the Bashkas by giving, giving the chief gifts and got the land for two pence and the land was so fertile and there was also a riverbed and he was so impressed and that is why this passing dealer you know when he goes off he stops by Pahom's home and he tells about this deal out there well the devil has already started working within Pahom and you know what to expect Pahom would only want more. He's not satisfied with what, what he has now. He left this 20 acres. He comes to this 125 acres. And then he's also settling an agreement for 1,500 rubles. And now he hears about another deal for 1,000 rubles. Well, better off than the above. Then why not? Move ahead. Go to the Bashkas, make friends with the 
chief. That's exactly what Pahom thought. Well, he started off and he reached the Bashkis. It took him almost seven days to reach the Bashkis. As the passing dealer had told him, the Bashkis had plenty of land, plenty of cattle and horses. They, the, the mares were milked. They also made a cumis. Cumis is a drink. Remember this drink, cumis? It's a drink uh, made of fermented milk. And this is what gave energy to the Bashkis. And this is what they often drank. And cheese were made. So they were uh, living quite a luxurious life, drinking uh, cumis, having cheese, having meat, a merry life. And the women out there, they prepared all these and they ate together and they played their pipes and they led a merry life. So this is what we know about the Bashkas, a people who lived a happy, exciting life altogether. Well, they didn't know Russian because this was a little away from the main part and they didn't know Russian and therefore they had an interpreter uh, for Pahom because Pahom spoke only Russian language and therefore he had an interpreter for, um, for him to speak to the Bashkis. So as soon as Pahom reaches there, he, the, the interpreter takes Pahom to the best tent, gives him cumis and mutton after which Pahom distributes the gifts that he had brought all the way from Volga. They were so happy with the gifts that Pahom had brought. And they said, you can ask whatever you like. You can ask whatever you like. As much as you wish rather, you only need to point out what you want and all that is yours. And then you see that there is someone coming in who is wearing a fox fur cap. Fox fur cap, a tall man. Well, that is when they realize, that's, that's when Pahom realizes that's none other than the chief of the Bashkas. Remember, the dealer had told them, if you can make good friends with the chief, you would get the best. So suddenly, when the chief comes in, he gives the best of the gifts that he had brought to the chief. The chief was ex extremely happy with Pahom and a land deed is signed after their conversations. And this is what? 1000 rubles a day. Okay? Only on one condition. Well, you only need to pay 1000 rubles a day. But only on one condition. You can go about as long as you walk, as, you, as long as you want. As long as you travel on one's feet, you can go. And cover the entire place. And come to that starting point and all that land is yours. Wow, what an agreement. You walk all the way the entire day, you reach your starting point and the, uh, the area that you've covered is all yours and you just have to pay 1000 rubles. Brilliant idea. Pahom knew he could do much more than he had all these while because he himself is a peasant and he has no problem walking around on his feet. Well, they had yet another condition. So the first condition, in a single day, so 1000 rubles in a single day. 
and on feet. This was the first condition. Second day, sorry, second condition, if you are not able to return to the starting point before the sun sets, you lose all your money. money. Okay, that's the second condition. You lose your thousand rubles if you do not come to the starting point before sunset. Well, Pahom knew it was quite an easy task for him because he has been labouring in the land, tilling the land days in and out and therefore this was nothing, absolutely nothing. It's quite an easy task for him. So Pahom finally agrees. He is delighted. He is so delighted and excited that he just could not sleep that night. And he was only thinking of the land that he would be covering the next day. And therefore he just could not sleep. And this, the reason as to why he could not sleep was because he was thinking of how much he would acquire the next day. Okay, so until he reaches Bashkir, okay, where he's been gaining quite a lot. In two years, he is able to pay off, uh, and again he goes to Volga. Again, he makes a good, uh, fine collection out there. That is the second section, or that is the rising action of the story. Okay. The moment he reaches Bashkis and the moment he signs this agreement, that is the climax. The what, what we are going to just say is the climax of the story. So as I said, Pahom is extremely delighted. He just cannot sleep because he's thinking about what is going to happen tomorrow. And therefore, he has a sleepless night and also a dream. Remember, these all comes under the climax, the third section. Well, this dream was not the usual ones that he had, but in fact, quite an eerie and a scary dream. Well, in his dream, he sees that someone is chuckling outside his tent or laughing to himself outside the tent. And when he goes out, he sees the chief sitting in front of the tent and laughing. As he goes closer to the chief to ask him why he is laughing at this point of time, that is when he realizes that that is not the chief, but rather the dealer who is sitting there and laughing. Well, as he approaches one step closer, that is when he realizes that's not even the dealer, but rather the traveler peasant who had come initially before he went to Volga. Well, again, when he makes another step closer to the person who is laughing, he sees the devil himself. It's neither the chief, nor the dealer, nor the traveler peasant, but rather the devil himself with hooves and horns. Oh, what a dream. Well, this is not the end of the dream. But Pahom also notices a man lying prostrate before the devil. And this man was dead. And when he looks closely, he sees that the dead man is none other than Pahom himself. Pahom was horror struck and he jumped out of his tent. He just could not think of this dream at all. Remember, he has not slept the whole night. And at some time he had this horrifying dream as well. Then he realized that it was rather morning. The chief and his, uh, the rest of the peasants were waiting out there before his tent. 
gives him cumis, the energy drink. They drink cumis together. He took his cap and placed it on the ground. This is a cap that we are talking about. The chief took off his fox fur cap, put it on the ground and marking that as a starting point. So remember, this, when the sun is going up, when it's rising, he has to start and before the sun sets, he has to reach this very own starting point. And here, the fox fur cap is a starting point. So he has to come back to this, this particular place. And on this cap, he places 1,000 rubles on that cap. And he started towards the direction of the rising sun. After three miles, he takes off his boots. And before midday, Pahom was quite happy. He was making a long stride too. Before midday, he covered a huge square of land. And after this point, he found that the journey was quite difficult. Because of the scorching heat, he's not had a sleep. And the journey was not as smooth as to how he had in the morning. And therefore, he threw away his coat. He threw away his boots, his cap and kept only his spade. And the spade he had carried all the way from the beginning as a marking point to all the places that he would be walking around. And now we know that it's close to evening. He did not stop in between other than to have a drink, a glass of water, nothing because he did not want to rest. He would lose that much amount of land. See, look at the desire in his heart. He seems to be quite greedy now. He had so much with him. He was doing quite fine. But now, he does not have time to waste, not even to keep him stable, not even to keep his body stable, but rather keeps walking. The devil is working within him. As soon as he looks, he can see that the sun is nearing the rim. Before it crosses, he has to reach the fox fur cap. At this point of time, there is a very strange fear that he has. He even started thinking, will God let me live on the land that I, that I accumulate? Well, he did not want any kind of a thought at this point of time. So he, mustering all the strength that he had, the remaining strength that he had, he runs fast as he could. And there he could see the Bashkas shouting out for him because even the Bashkas were so uh, surprised and also excited at the way this man was proceeding because they've never seen such a man ever who's gained a whole large amount of land in this one day within the period of time that they've given. There were only two conditions and yes, he did keep the condition and the Bashkas were shouting out. They were laughing and sitting on top of the hill. They could see him and they were too excited. And again, at that last lap, you can see Pahom recounting the dream that he had the previous night. A strange feeling struck him altogether. He had a fear. And now this dream coming to him again, recounting the dream, a not so good feeling, a very strange feeling altogether. And as soon as he comes to that finishing point, he falls down. His servant goes running to him to check on him. But now, Pahom was lying flat on the ground, oozing out blood. He's fallen 
dead. So it's only the dead body of Pahom that reaches to that final point. Yes, he did reach, but he did also have that fear within him. Will God allow me to live on it? Well, yes. God did not allow him to live on it. By the time he reached the last point, he falls dead, oozing out blood. His servant took the spade. He dug six feet into the ground. That's his grave. And the servant buried the home into the six feet of land. Giving us the answer to the title or the question that I asked, an ironical answer. How much land does a man need? Not more than six feet. And this is the falling action. How pathetic a condition. Man's craving for more. Man is never happy or content with what he has. He only wants more. The more he tries, the more he has, the more he gets, he would want only one step higher. It could be anything. It could be any materialistic possession. But finally, think about the story that Leo Tolstoy tells us. How much land does a man need? Just like the fear that he had in between. Will God let me live on it? Well, James Joyce, one of the famous writers in English, writes to his daughter, sending the story to her and tells her, this is the greatest story that the literature of the world knows. You don't need to know anything else, but read the story. This is the greatest story ever that man ought to think daily. Where is man's greed leading to? Should we be losing our life to enrich our greed? It's the selfish desire of Pahom that ultimately led to his downfall, the falling action. And this a selfish desire is again the ultimate cause of all evil. Man is so selfish by nature. But you, when you make that grow one bit more, it keeps growing so bad that it eats up your inner self. And that is the ultimate evil that you can ever think of. Yes, the devil did work. Remember what Pahom said? If I had more land, I would not even fear the devil himself. Yes, yes, the devil trapped him, worked within him. He did have everything from 20 to 125 and then the next two, the biggest. But Pahom was not there to live in that final stage where he accumulates so much of wealth. So it's this greed of man that can never be satisfied is what Tolstoy points out to. Also talks about one of the major themes that we see here is about the greed of man. Also talks about man's free will. Man can decide whether it is right or wrong. He also has the ability within him to decide between the right and wrong. He's free to do what he needs to. But remember, if you do not use it wisely, this would be the state for each one of us, just as to what happened to Pahom. And therefore, this story is considered to be the biggest parable ever. A very good parable. Right? 
A parable is something that gives us a lesson. Yes, it also it does tell us a lesson. Not to be greedy. Man is selfish by nature. Man does have greed. But if you keep working on it, it will eat up yourself. And then finally you wouldn't be there to enjoy it at all. And it's that realistic portrayal of life that he is bringing to us through the story how much land does a man need and an ironical answer six feet is all that you need you didn't you needn't need more this is all that you need and thus he ends up with an ironical note the irony is that Pahom falls dead when he wants to acquire a lot of land he's not there to enjoy that land that is the irony that you see here there is also irony mentioned in this this play the greed for land so as i've already mentioned there are four sections in the story the expo exposition the introductory stage where we see pahom pahom's wife and the elder sister meeting up having a casual conversation and the devil overhearing it then we have the rising action where uh, pahom is working in his land 20 acres of land he buys more land uh, he leases out land and then he also uh, has this another stranger visiting him from Volga. Again, he has another 125 acres of land where he moves from this first point to Volga, starts out a membership there. So you can see that Pahom is gradually, you know, moving up his ladder. That is a rising action. And then when he reaches the Bashkis, that's the climax, the dream that he has. Do not forget the dream. What is a dream? That somebody outside his tent is laughing. When he goes there, he sees that it is achieved. But when he goes one step closer, that is when he realizes it's none of them, but rather the devil himself. And not only that, there is somebody lying on the floor, dead. And when he realizes that's none other than Pahom himself, that takes him back. And at this point of time, you can see that the strange fear within him again the climax and the last one is a falling action he's almost about to reach the final point and the bashkis are shouting out there he's almost ready he's kept his thousand rubles out there as well he's almost to this final position but his greed remember just the previous night he did not even have a wink of sleep and all this tiredness has accumulated he's not even stopped to have anything in between greed for more and more and finally which results to his death a story that we need to think about a story that we all have to keep in mind that is when we realize man cannot be too greedy and he cannot be working too much for his greed because all that you need is six feet of land. Thank you.